cargo aircraft that features a direct operating cost of four and a half cents per ton mile. A fully mechanized cargo handling system that reduces turnaround to one hour. A design that efficiently utilizes cubic capacity and payload. The first cargo aircraft that makes the cost of air transportation competitive with that of surface transport. This is the Canadair 44. Cargo volume, 7,350 cubic feet. Cruising speed, 400 miles an hour. Net payload, up to 65,000 pounds. The 44 is the latest in a long line of high performance aircraft produced over the years by Canadair Limited. From this Canadian subsidiary of General Dynamics Corporation, have come such aircraft as the T-33 jet trainer, the 540 turboprop airliner, the submarine hunting Argus, the F-86 Sabre, and today, the supersonic CF-104. The 44 can operate out of virtually all the major airports in the world. At its maximum landing weight of 165,000 pounds, it requires a field length of only 6,200 feet. The unusually low weight of airborne cargo handling equipment gives a maximum net payload, and it can be completely offloaded and reloaded within the period needed for servicing and refueling. Taxiing in reverse is a normal operation. Thus, even in confined areas, the aircraft can be quickly and accurately positioned. With the main compartment filled with cargo, Access to the swing tail control panel is gained through the rear door. This is the first step in the offloading operation. To handle its great payload effectively, the fuselage is divided into four compartments. Main compartment, 5,528 cubic feet. The mechanized area contains 10 pallets and bulk cargo is loaded in the forward area. Forward underfloor compartment, 523 cubic feet. It accommodates seven small containers. Aft underfloor compartment, 586 cubic feet. It will hold five large or ten small containers. Tail compartment, 711 cubic feet for bulk cargo or high priority items. Since hydraulic power to the tail is disconnected before takeoff, it is impossible for the tail to be opened accidentally in flight. Eight hydraulic jacks lock the two sections of the aircraft together, and all latch jacks incorporate mechanical locks. A spring-loaded locking pin in each latch provides a final safety measure. On the ground, both swing tail and forward cargo door open by hydraulic power. Controlled by a simple switch operating hydraulic jacks, the tail will open against a 30 mile an hour wind and hold open against gusts of 60 miles an hour in the most adverse direction. The tail opens through 105 degrees in two minutes. The operation is controlled by one man. Hydraulic and electrical lines are carried across the brake by swivel joints and flexible hoses inside the hinge fairings. 
Flight control runs require no manual work to disengage and automatically reposition correctly when the tail closes. At ten and a half minutes from touchdown, a specially designed cargo lift truck moves out to offload the aircraft. The truck shown is an early production model. Here in action is the fully mechanized cargo system that provides full payload turnaround in 60 minutes, thus ensuring the greatest number of productive flight hours each day. The cargo lift truck is positioned only once to perform both the offloading and the loading operations. Special sensing devices on the vehicle maintain the correct relationship between truck platform and aircraft sill during loading and offloading. Through the sensors, aircraft pitch, roll, or yaw is automatically matched by the truck platform. Installed on each side of the main compartment are the winch drives, which withdraw pallets from the main compartment. Winch power is provided from the loading vehicle, thus reducing airframe payload penalty. As the pallet crosses the sill, the leveling sensors keep truck and fuselage in alignment. The truck-powered rollers take over from the winches, and the pallet moves onto the truck platform. On production vehicles now in service, the speed of the truck-powered rollers has been increased to match aircraft winch speed. While the main compartment is being offloaded, other operations are in progress around the aircraft. At the forward underfloor compartment, containers slide out over a roller-equipped extension to a forklift, which places them on a dolly train for transfer to the cargo terminal. At the same time, on the left side of the aircraft, handlers are offloading bulk cargo from the forward section of the main compartment. With the first pallet on the cargo lift truck, the winch hooks return and the second pallet is drawn from the compartment. Now the hooks return for the third pallet. And the first two pallets are lowered in readiness for transfer to the dolly train. Time from touchdown, 12 minutes. The train of dollies is moved into position. The truck's power rollers transfer the pallet to the dolly. The dolly train moves forward to accept the second pallet. These operations are repeated to offload all ten pallets. At the forward underfloor compartment, all seven containers have been offloaded and reloading has begun. Containers move along the roller-equipped floor by means of a power-operated cable and hook. As bulk loading of the forward main compartment commences, remaining pallets are being transferred from cargo lift to dolly train. When the last pallet is clear, the truck bed is raised to offload the aft underfloor compartment and the underfloor containers are drawn out by a powered attachment on the truck. This is the system specifically developed to meet the needs for speed, low cost, flexibility and efficiency in the growing air cargo market. An essential factor in the extreme economy of its operation is the light, simple design of the equipment. The basic slide pallet of plywood faced with aluminum, weighing 140 pounds, can carry a load of 8,000 pounds. It provides maximum usable load with minimum volume and weight penalty. With sidewalls and top of light alloy, 
it becomes a protective container, also of 8,000 pounds capacity. A similar refrigeration container is available for perishable goods. The large underfloor container seen here on a supporter has a volume of 78 and a half cubic feet and carries 1,500 pounds. While the small container has a volume of 33 cubic feet and holds 800 pounds. The last container is loaded into the forward underfloor compartment. The aft underfloor loading is complete and the dolly train arrives at the aircraft where the ten oncoming pallets are transferred to the main compartment. Time from touchdown, 28 and a half minutes. The cargo lift truck raises two 8,000 pound pallets safely and quickly. And the sensors automatically compensate for any movement of the aircraft. The pallets move in and out of the main compartment on special rubbing strips attached both to pallet base and compartment floor. In this way, weight penalty and volume loss associated with rollers is overcome. All pallet loads are restrained by throwover nets secured to the pallet base, and barrier nets installed between pallets are capable of withstanding 9G forward acceleration. At 57 minutes after the aircraft has touched down, refueling is complete. 65,000 pounds of cargo have been offloaded and an equal amount of cargo placed aboard. With the closing of cargo doors and swing tail, the aircraft will be ready to taxi out. The tail alignment ramp ensures that the swing tail positions exactly with the fuselage. The eight latches lock home. Latches are visually inspected and with the power line to the tail hydraulic system disconnected as a final safety measure, the aircraft is ready for flight. The key factor in CL44 efficiency is the flexibility of the cargo system. At offline bases, alternative loading techniques may be used. Here, a rear sill extension is being lifted into position to support a roller deck platform which will receive either palletized or bulk cargo. The cargo is raised to the rear sill extension by means of a forklift. The rear sill extension can also be used with a crane and heavy-duty pallets to handle specialized cargo. In this case, the cargo is two complete F-104 starfighters and spare engines. Lifted by a standard crane, the heavy-duty pallet shown here is supporting a cargo weight of 9,400 pounds. Another method utilizes the cargo elevator, shown here dismantled, ideally suited to offline bases where heavy lifting equipment is not available. Completely air transportable, this elevator can be powered from the aircraft and is quickly and easily assembled. Use of rollers with the platform is optional, depending on the type of cargo to be handled. A single operator controls the motors of the elevator which raises the cargo to the correct height for loading. 
with the cargo at height, the elevator is moved forward to its final position against the aircraft. For bulk or palletized cargo loading, the elevator would be in this position throughout. Already in service with the Royal Canadian Air Force, the cargo elevator has proven itself under operational conditions. The choice of techniques shown in this film demonstrates the unique versatility of the 44 system, a prime factor in fast and efficient air cargo operations anywhere in the world. This is the Canada Air 44, the first cargo aircraft that makes the cost of air transportation competitive with that of surface transport. Net payload, 65,000 pounds. Turnaround, 60 minutes. Direct operating costs, four and a half cents a ton mile.